Hey everybody, welcome back to Organic Chemistry. My name is Todd Rothman, and in this video, we're going to go over the ether reactions. The good news is that there's only one reaction, so there's not much to this video itself. So I hope that you guys had a chance to look over the work, the problem solving video for the last section where we had a whole bunch of problems. This is actually a lot easier and a lot quicker to go through. Okay, let's get started and take a look at it. So what we have here is a hydrogen halide reaction. So if you have an ether, the question is, what happens, how can you break the ether apart? And the way you could break it apart is by using HX, like for example, HBr. And here's the general idea of what's going to happen. You pronate the, uh, the oxygen, right, by using an acid. And then it's either going to go through an SM1 or an SN2 attack. Now, we have to decide what's going to happen next. Now, well, there's a few rules to consider, but let me just show you the basics of what's going to happen. So, the BR is either going to come in and push out the oxygen, or the oxygen is going to just leave on its own, and then the BR comes in. Now, here's the thing. That's this, in this case, I chose to push out the oxygen, and you'll see why. I'm going to give you a summary right now of this, but it's because it's primary. But in general, it can go through SN1 or SN2. It depends on the condition. But another thing I want to point out is that if this is in excess, then this is going to go through it again. Another HBr is going to want to protonating the oxygen. And then Br is going to come in and push it out for a second time. Now, this is definitely SN2, just like this one. And it's really because of the same reason. Remember the rule for alcohol? When you protonate it with HX, if it's a methyl or primary, it's SN2, right? So that's what we're seeing here. So you wind up getting alkyl bromide twice as a net result of this. So we had an ether, we protonate it, and then we push a halogen into it. So let's go over the details. Now, the first detail, these are the rules that we have to remember. Number one, X could equal BR or CL or I. Now, it could be F, but F is not as popular, so I'm going to write the ones that are. These are the three most popular, okay? Now, the next rule I want to point out is that SN1 is better than SN2. So, if you have a choice, SN1 is favored, okay? So, it's better to make a carbocation than it is to displace it. That's the first thing to consider. The second point is that SN1 only occurs if there's a tertiary side. That's important, okay? So, if you have a tertiary side, then they can make a carbocation. Now, secondary is on the fence. So, secondary, possibly. It's possible. This is actually one that's on the fence. It's possible for secondary, but always for tertiary. So, the next rule I want to point out is that if it's methyl, primary, or secondary, then it's favoring SN2. Now, actually, I'm going to take out the secondary because... Um, well, you know, I'll, I, I don't want to make it confusing, so I'm going to leave out the secondary for now. And so I'm just going to put it like this. If it's methyl or primary, it's SN2. Okay, now you say, well, what do these rules mean? Well, what are we talking about? All right, let me give you an example. Imagine as an example, I have a tertiary ether that has a methyl on the other side of it, or let's say ethyl, for example. So I'm going to write H. I. Okay? Now, I'm going to protonate the oxygen. That's always the first step. Make it positive. And now I'm about to break it apart. And I have to decide what pathway to choose. Well, here's the rule. This carbon here is tertiary. And this one is primary. So, the fact that there's a tertiary side, it wins. Because remember, SN1 wins over SN2. So if there's a tertiary side, it is always the side that you're going to wind up having attacked by the halogen. But here's how it works. Since there's a tertiary side, this is going to leave. We're going to make a carbocation, and now we have an alcohol. And then I comes in. I minus comes into that position. And so we wind up getting that right there, plus ethanol. Now, I could write excess above. But if I do, then you're not going to track what happened first, right? Eventually, you can get the alcohol, the ethanol, to become...